Nargis Mohammadi for her fight against the oppression of women in Iran and her fight to promote human rights and freedom for all. Her brave struggle has come with tremendous personal cost. Altogether, the regime has arrested her 13 times, convicted her five times, and sentenced her to a total of 31 years in prison and 154 lashes. Ms. Mohammadi is still in prison as I speak. In September 2022, a young Kurdish woman, Masha Gina Amini, was killed in the custody of the Iranian Morality Police. Her killing triggered the largest political demonstrations against Iran's theocratic regime since it came to power in 1979. Under the slogan, Woman, Life, Freedom, hundreds of thousands of Iranians took part in peaceful protests against the authorities' brut brutality and oppression of women. The regime cracked hard down on the protests. More than 500 demonstrators were killed. Thousands were injured, including many who were blinded by rubber bullets fired by the police. At least 20,000 people were arrested and held in custody. The motto adopted by the demonstrators, woman, life, freedom, suitably expresses the dedication and work of Nargis Mohammadi. Woman, she fights for women against systematic discrimination and oppression. Life. She supports women's struggle for the right to live full and dignified lives. This struggle across Iran has been met with persecution, imprisonment, torture, and even death. Freedom. She fights for freedom of expression and the right to independence and against rules requ requiring women to remain out of sight and cover up their bodies. The freedom demands expressed by demonstrators apply not only to women, but to the entire population. In the 1990s, as a young physics student, Nargis Mohammadi was already distinguishing herself as an advocate for equality and women's rights. After concluding her studies, she worked as an engineer as well as a columnist in various reform-minded newspapers. In 2003, she became involved with the Defense of Human Rights Center in Tehran, an organization founded by the Nobel Peace Prize laureate Shireen Ebadi. In 2011, Ms. Mohammadi was arrested for the first time and sentenced to many years of imprisonment for her efforts to assist incarcerated activists and their families. Two years later, after her release on bail, Ms. Mohammadi immersed herself in a campaign against the use of death penalty. Iran has long been among the countries that execute the highest proportion of their inhabitants annually. Just since January 2022, more than 860 prisoners have been punished by death in Iran. Her activism against the death penalty 
led to the re-arrest of Ms. Mohammadi in 2015 and to a sentence of additional years behind walls. Upon her return to prison, she began, she began opposing the regime's systematic use of torture and sexualized violence against political prisoners, and especially women, that is practiced in Iranian prisons. Last year's wave of protests became known to the political prisoners held inside the notorious Evin prison in Tehran. Once again, Ms. Mohammadi assumed leadership. From prison, she expressed support for the demonstrators and organized solidarity actions among her fellow inmates. The prison authorities responded by imposing even stricter conditions. Ms. Mohammadi was prohibited from receiving calls and visitors. She nevertheless managed to smuggle out an article which the New York Times published on the one-year anniversary of Marsha Gina Amini's killing. The message was, the more of us they lock up, the stronger we become. From captivity, Ms. Mohammadi has helped to ensure that the protests have not ebbed out. Nargis Mohammadi is a woman, a human rights advocate, and a freedom fighter. In awarding her this year's Nobel Peace Prize, the Norwegian Nobel Committee wishes to honor her courageous fight for human rights, freedom, and democracy in Iran. This year's Peace Prize also recognizes the hundreds of thousands of people who in the preceding year have demonstrated against the theocratic regime's policies of discrimination and oppression targeting women. Only by embracing equal rights for all can the world achieve the fraternity between nations um, that Alfred Nobel sought to promote. The award to Nargis Mohammadi follows a long tradition in which the Norwegian Nobel Committee has awarded the Peace Prize to those working to advance social justice, human rights, and democracy. These are important preconditions for lasting peace. Thank you. Madam Chair, um, what impact do you hope that this prize will have on the situation in Iran? This prize is first and foremost a recognition of the very important work of a whole movement in Iran but with its undisputed leader, Nargis Mohammadi. Um, the impact of the prize is not for the Nobel Committee to decide upon. We hope that it is an encouragement to continue the work in whichever form the, this movement finds to be fitting. Uh, this is a person who is imprisoned. Uh, what uh, will be uh, the situation in December when uh, she is uh, actually uh, given the prize? Well, if the Iranian authorities make the right decision, they will release her so she can be present to receive this honor, which is what we primarily hope for. Um, how we will carry out the arrangements. We have a couple of months to plan that. Stoltalsnes from TV2 Norway. Uh, the three 
last year's laureates uh, are uh, receiving treatment from their respective governments uh, following authoritarian regimes around the world that suppresses opposition and all these prices they illustrate that being a freedom fighter being in opposition comes at a very high cost and of course uh, Mohammadi and Bialyatsky they have this in common that they have been fighting for basic human rights and it has cost them everything, their lives. They are in prison on long uncertain prison terms. They are isolated from family, friends, the rest of the world. For them individually, I think we can hardly imagine. And what is the signal from the Nobel uh, Committee to the Iranian government? Well, the signal is, listen to your own people. Uh, and the signal is, sustainable societies have um, a civil society, have basic democratic rights, and respect individuals' human rights. That is the signal. Uh. Madam Chair, how has the committee reflected on whether or not this price will affect Nargis Mohammadi's security situation? This is, of course, impossible for us to predict. She is already in prison. She has over, actually, three decades since she was a student led a life with um, a calculated risk. And she has taken the position that she will do what is right at all costs. But if there's any further repercussions against her, the responsibility for that is at the government or other people who carry out these repercussions. Uh, the war in Ukraine still has great impact for people all over the world. Why has this year's Nobel Peace Prize not reflected on that? Well, we never comment on the prizes that we do not give, uh, as you implicated in your question to have a comment on why we had not looked in a different direction. This year, we have found it paramount to, first of all, honor this very particular movement in Iran that is a unique situation. Many have described what has happened during the last year as a revolution. Perhaps that remains to be seen. But what we do see is that a revolution carried out by women is a little bit different than other movements. That is significant, but also it is a global problem to honor the half of the population that is women in several countries around the world. Mishko Tardetsky, Gazeta.pl from Warsaw. This year, laureate and prize seems to have much more universal context because women's rights are in danger in worldwide, uh, worldwide. Don't you think that it is an address not only to Iranian government, but to many other governments worldwide, not only in Iran, but in Central or Eastern Europe, in Africa, in Southern America, and so on? Absolutely. But I will also say, and I would like to add, that I believe all the Nobel Prizes also have an universal impact. We connected to one person, one movement, one situation, but there is a universal message of what it takes to create peaceful societies. Any further questions?
doesn't seem to be the case. So then the press conference is on. Thank you very much.